Come on, we feeling good? We alive today? Come on, let's make some noise. Give me something better than that. Let's make some noise, friends. So good. Hey, I'm Pastor Ben, and, and I'm so excited to be with you today. I just want to take a second and tell you that you belong in your family. Turn to somebody and tell them their family. Okay, that's right. I want to welcome everybody that's watching online or maybe you're listening to the podcast. Go ahead, like the stream that you're tuning into, then comment, let us know where you're watching from and share so that others can be ministered to. I want to take a second and I want to give a shout out to our two campuses. Can we make some noise, Cranberry Campus? And let's make some noise, Newcastle Campus. Come on, somebody. Come on, so good. Oh, we got it. We're excited. Hey, guys, One Night is amazing. It's when we're going to bus all of our campuses into one location. Come on, somebody. God is good. Come on, can we just take a second and look at the full house and how good God is? It's so awesome. But we welcome you. We, we, we love you, family. It's so good to be in God's house together. We're going to have a good time. Somebody say, I'm going to have a good time. We're going to have a good time and... Uh, and so but before we go any further, if, if you've been in our community for any length of time, maybe you've missed out on what we've been talking about, I encourage you to subscribe to YouTube, Victory Students, click the bell, get, get all of the content that's coming your way so you can be encouraged and strengthened daily. Amen? And, uh, and if you're watching with us online, right after the message, and, and my friends that are here, we, we still have small groups. We find freedom in small groups, and so we're going to be breaking into our small groups so friends that are online Right now, there's, there's a whole bunch of information coming up right below me. Go, go to that. Download Zoom. You're going to need it for small group time. It's just incredible what God's doing in our community. But, uh, but we're going we're gonna to find freedom in small groups. Amen? All right. It's going to be good. It's going to be good. Hey, today, uh, we're, we're going to be talking about right believing. Because I, I believe that if you and I, if we believe right, we'll live right. Um, I want to I talk today about understanding who Jesus is. Somebody say Jesus. Uh, come on, that's the king right there. Say it like you mean it. Jesus. Jesus. And you know, I want to talk around the big idea, which is the Son of God, Jesus. And, and, and we're going to be reading real quick out of Mark chapter 5. Mark chapter 5. It's not going to be up on the screens behind you. So team, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm pulling something out of my back pocket here. But Mark chapter 5 is where we're going to go. Can you just go ahead and turn with me to Mark chapter 5 in your Bibles? Um, you're going to need it because you won't have it to rely on. Amen? I just was testing you to see if you're listening to me. Some of you were because you said amen. Um, and so, but we're going to read out of Mark chapter 5. And uh, I, I just came to encourage somebody to tell, tell them who Jesus is. To encourage you and tell you who Jesus is. I, I, I think in life often... We always need a fresh revelation, a fresh perspective of who Jesus is. Amen? How many times do you guys think you could say that in the first five minutes of a service? But, uh, but Mark chapter 5, while you're turning there, I, I, I want to encourage you to take notes tonight. Note takers are history makers. I, I really believe that as you store up God's word in the well of your heart, in due time, in due season, he'll, he'll pull out what you need when you need it. I believe that. And, and, and I say all the time that you've got to be an echo before you can be a voice. In other words... We, we've got to get God's word in our heart so it bubbles out of us. That'll set somebody free if you catch that. It's really good. So Mark chapter 5, Mark chapter 5, and um, right now we're going to be reading about a, a, a woman that has an encounter with Jesus. I just got to be honest with you up front. Um, I, I, I'm dealing with some emotions from the Lord. Like, like all day, I've, I've been, you, you ever, anybody ever encounter Jesus or you get into God's presence and, and you just feel like you're on an emotional roller coaster sometimes, like you get good tears, Holy Spirit tears. If you're new to our community, when you encounter Jesus, it's such overwhelming peace that it, that it literally can, can bring you to peaceful, joyful tears. And I've just, I've been having that all day. I don't know what you're going to get. I just got to, that's my disclaimer to you in advance. And so Mark chapter 5 is about this, about this woman that encounters Jesus. See, Jesus was going somewhere to heal someone else. And this woman hears about it. And she goes out of, out of her way to have an encounter with Jesus. So go ahead with me. Mark chapter 5, if you're with me, say yeah. And so verse 25. A large crowd followed and pressed around him because he's going somewhere. He's on mission. He's on point. 
And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had a serious problem. It's bad. She, su she suffered, suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all that she had. Yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. 12 years. You, you, you just, it keeps getting worse and worse and worse. Talk about losing some hope there. When she heard about Jesus, when she heard about Jesus, somebody say when she heard about Jesus, she came up and she, behind him and in the crowd, and she touched his cloak because she thought, she thought, she thought, oh, if, if, if I just touched his clothes, I'd be healed. If I could just, he don't even need to know, if I could just reach out and touch him, I'm going to get healed. Somebody say healed. Immediately her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was freed from her suffering. At once Jesus realized that the power had gone from him and he turned around in the crowd and he asked, who touched my clothes? Who touched my clothes? Somebody say, who touched my clothes? Friends, that's key because Jesus didn't even know. He didn't even know. You see, people were crowding against you. His disciples answered, and, and yet, yet you ask, who touched me? But Jesus, Jesus kept looking around for, to see who had done it. And then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet, trembling with fear. Told him the whole truth. It was me, Jesus. He said to her daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace. And you're freed from your suffering. Go in peace, and you're freed from your suffering. i got to tell you, I've, I've just been encountering God today multiple times. I'm trying my best to get out my words. I came to encourage us who Jesus is, to give us a fresh revelation of Jesus, and i got to tell you, I just keep getting hit with Jesus because he's so good. He's so good. And I believe that today, that if we'll grasp that, if we'll lean in, I don't know your background. I don't know where you came from. I don't know if this is your first time in church and you're like, the preacher's up here, can't even control his emotions. I'm telling you. I'm telling you how good Jesus is. He's so good. But this is remarkable. Her faith freed her. Her faith freed her. We're going to land on these scriptures in a moment. We're going to land the plane on these scriptures here in a moment. But I'm going to share five things today about what I love about Jesus. And then we're going to come back to this verse. We're going to land the plane. And I believe that if you'll lean in today and you'll take good notes, I believe that God's going to do something so sweet in your life. Something so good. Just say, God can do it. He can. So today we're going to talk about Jesus. Because this, this Jesus is the big idea. He's all that matters. Who is Jesus? Who is this, this man that came to save all humanity? This, this man that this woman just hears about, never met him, but heard such amazing. Who is this Jesus? Our belief on who Jesus is, is we believe in Jesus Christ. That, that he is God's only son. The Lord was conceived by the Holy Spirit. Born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, and was crucified, died, and buried for you and I. He descended to the dead, and praise God, come on, hallelujah, on the third day, he rose again, defeating death. Come on, somebody. That's a good place to make some noise. He ascended into heaven, and right now, Right now, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. We believe this about Jesus, our Lord and Savior. I want to preach today. You could go ahead, you can write down the title, I Believe in Jesus. I Believe in Jesus. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, I believe in Jesus. Say it like you mean it. Come on, I, I believe that God's going to show up and he's going to speak to us today, that we're going to have a great time in his presence today. God's word is what sets us free. God's word is what sets us free. And we've got some scripture today. 
And, and I don't know, like I said, I don't know what you came in with. I don't know if it's anxiety, depression, if it's relational issues. I don't know what your baggage is, what your story is, but I know who Jesus is. And God's word is what sets us free, and that's what we're expecting today. That's what we're expecting. So come on, we're going to go ahead, we're going to bow our heads, and we're going to pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you. Holy Spirit, give me utterance. I thank you, Father, for, for teaching us and revealing to us who you are. Lord, I thank you for your presence. It's so sweet. Lord, I thank you for the amazing time that we're going to have in, in service today, God. And I thank you that we can make an appointment with you. That we can show up. That we can encounter you. God, we heard about you. But we want to reach out and we want to touch you. And so I thank you, Jesus, for, for what you're going to do in today's service. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen, amen and amen. Um, I, I gotta, I gotta share with you real quick, cause I absolutely hate this. I'm sure you got some things in your life that you hate that you just can't stand. This is one. I talk about it a lot because I like, I really, I really, hate, let me go as far as to say I loathe. Like I loathe getting sick. Anybody else? Anybody else you just hate getting sick? Like right now, we're all scared to raise our hands. We're like, um, <laughs> the climate that we're in, the temperature, like COVID-19. You know, we're, we're in flu season, normal flu season, right? It's normal allergy time, and people start getting sniffles. But you notice how everybody gets scared? Like, you're like, no, it's not Rona. It's not, I swear it's not Rona. I just, you know, I, <laughs> the pollen in the air, like, that, that's all that it is. We get scared. We're, like, nervous. Like, I don't want to go get tested. I'm good. I'm good. It's normal. I just get a cough sometimes around this time. It's okay. And, and, you know, it's like, it's so crazy. But I hate getting sick, like normal sick, not COVID sick, like normal sick. And it's the worst. Like when you've got a fever, a headache, a stomach ache, you know, and, and you just got a headache. I, I get a man cold. Am I preaching to any men in the room that's not afraid to say like, hey, this is me. I'm down and out for the count. Just ask Alyssa. And so some people get sick. It doesn't bother them. They just keep going. Me, I'm done. I'm crippled. It's bad in our house. And, and you know, I, I, was th I was thinking about my mom growing up. And my, my mom, she's an amazing woman. And, uh, but I'm seeing some things, in, even in my marriage with Alyssa, that correlate to each other. And she doesn't know what I'm about to share. She's right over there. Alyssa's my wife. And, and so I'm about to say something that could get me in trouble. But my mom and Alyssa have something very similar. In, in, they have something very similar in common. There's something in common. And it's so awesome because, um, you know, like, like right now, in our house, Alyssa's solution, Alyssa's, the way that she solves every single problem is Vicks Vapor Rub in our house. Like, this is, the, this is it right now. I'm telling you. And that was my mom's thing growing up as well. And so, so every single time when we would go through something and we weren't feeling well, my, my mom's cure to all illnesses, to all sicknesses, was Vicks Vapor Rub. Am I preaching to anybody today in the house of God? Like, like this is it. Alyssa, she'll tell you. She's got a, like, diffuser and all kinds of stuff. She's pouring Vicks Vapor Rub on the kids, and it's just, <laughs> she's like, you're not feeling good. Come here. Come here. I'm going to rub it all over you. And, and it's just crazy. But it doesn't matter what it was. That would, that would solve all of our problems in our house. Like, if you rolled your ankle, my mom would be like, come over here. You, what, you got her playing basketball? Vicks Vapor Rub's going to make it okay. <laughs> like, if some, like, like, dudes, if a girl broke up with you, my mom would be like, oh, my gosh, come over, son, come here, come, come here. Bring your heart over here. Let's rub Vicks Vapor Rub all over that thing. Like, you don't need Shawn Mendes. You need Vicks Vapor Rub. Like, that, that just my mom believed that, but isn't it funny? Isn't it funny that, that when you've got a problem with your eyes, you go to the optometrist. When you've got, when you've got a problem with your back and your back hurts, you go to the, the chiropractor. When you've got problems in your head and your thought life, where do you go? The, the psychiatrist. But where do we go for soul issues? Where do we go for soul problems? See, we believe that Jesus Christ is the ultimate solution. Our belief is that Jesus is the antidote. He will solve all of our problems. He's the savior. He, he's the solution. He's the hero. Come on. He is the big idea. 
If you agree with the title, I believe in Jesus, just make some noise right now in the house of God. Come on. Come on. I want to give you a few things to write down today that I just, I really believe are going to encourage us. And then we're going to land with the scripture that I, uh, that I shared with us. But write this down today. Go ahead. These are five things I absolutely love about Jesus. Number one, Jesus is my healer. Jesus is my healer. Come on, we just read what Jesus did for the woman who had a problem for 12 years that doctors couldn't solve. And an encounter with him in his presence, Jesus showed up and, and, and healed. This is incredible. You know, it's, 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 it's so amazing. It's one thing to live your life understanding authority. It's a whole nother level when you walk in authority and you understand what God has done in your life and you own it. It's a whole, it, that's, whole, that's a whole nother level. Jesus is my personal healer, and we've got to own that. We've got to walk in the authority. In the Bible, Jesus had a healing ministry, and today, Jesus has a healing ministry because the Bible says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. So Jesus Christ, he's the same. He healed blind people, deaf people, people with blood problems. He healed all kinds of people. He's still healing people today. He still wants to heal people right now in this service. It doesn't matter whether your back hurts, your knee hurts, your head hurts, or your heart hurts. Jesus can heal you. His name is above sickness. His name is above disease. His name is above cancer. His name is above all names and trumps everything. Does anybody here have today that in faith in, the, in Jesus Christ, son of the living God? Come on. That he has the power to heal. The Bible says, by his stripes, you and I are healed. Isaiah 53, actually ver verse 5, says that by his stripes, we are healed. In other words, when they, put those, when they put those lashes on his back, and he went through that pain, the excruciating pain, it bought your healing. The other day I was talking to somebody. Um, they, they called into the church, and I was just loving on them and ministering to them. And they, they were telling me that their mom had a stroke. And so in the midst of right now of, of, of the chaos that they're going through and, 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 and he's just sharing with me everything that's doing, he says, Ben, you know, you, know what's, you know what's crazy? He said, the Holy Spirit told me that there's, something's not right with my mom. My mom's not okay. And so he said, I, I, I didn't know what to do. I was just being obedient to God. So I put her in the car and we went to the emergency room. And, and when they went to the emergency room, they caught the stroke early. They caught it early. So right now she's recovering. Come on, that's amazing. But you know, when I, when I prayed for her, when I prayed for her, I said, in the name of Jesus, by your stripes, she is healed. God's not surprised. God's not shocked. He prompted his heart. And you better believe that God can show up and will and did heal her in the name of Jesus. Amen? We, we, had, a, we had a young girl here in Echo. And, uh, and I, was, I was talking on the weekend, and I was just sharing with the middle school students. I was, I was talking about healing and and this girl's hearing me talk and hearing me talk and, and I just, I, I keep sharing what's going on. And, and so she comes up to me, I keep sharing about healing and, and she comes up to me after service and she says, Pastor Ben, I believe while you were talking that God wants to heal me. I said, yeah, yes, he, do, he absolutely does. He, he, and he will heal you. And she said, no, no, I know. I know that I know that God wants to heal me. And, and I said, well, what do, you, what do you need God to heal you of? And she started telling me, she said, when I was in like ninth grade, I was in this car accident. And, and, and we didn't see it come in the car, hit us. And, and when it happened, it dislocated my leg. And when my, when my leg popped out, my, my hip, all, all of that. And I can't remember all the details that she told me. I'm not a doctor, but basically it tore up stuff on the inside. It did some serious damage. And the doctor said that when you graduate high school, we need to give you a hip replacement. That's what they told her. And I, I, I said, I don't believe that. She said, no, neither, neither do I, but God, God wants to heal me right now. And I said, he absolutely does. And, and so a, a, a couple leaders, a, Alyssa and I, we, we laid hands on this, this young girl and we started to pray for her. I'm telling you, when we started to pray for her, she didn't have to tell me that she was healed. The presence of God showed up in the room so strong. I mean, those overwhelming tears that you just, the, those peaceful, good tears. I, I knew she began to weep. She couldn't control herself. She's just uncontrollably crying. Good tears, not bad tears, like overwhelmed with such joy. She never told me that she was healed. Alyssa looks up, to, up at me, 
She had her hand on her hip. She goes, she felt her hip go pop right there. That girl was healed. That girl was healed. I saw before my very eyes her hip come into total alignment. Listen, I, I don't care. It could be through text. It could be through your voice. But when you declare Jesus in Jesus' name, you declare Jesus is a healer, somebody's getting healed. Somebody's getting set free. Who the Son sets free is free indeed. It doesn't matter the form. It matters the belief. That's what matters. Today, right now, Jesus Christ can heal you. Right now, Jesus Christ can show up and heal you. The question is, when I say that, would you be shocked? Would you be shocked if God started boom, 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 boom all across this room? Or do you believe it because you're like, wait a minute. No, this, this is the Jesus I heard about. This is the Jesus I, I've been hearing rumors about that everywhere he goes, people are getting set free and healed. In fact, if this is you right now inside this room, if you've got a problem in your body, if you've got a problem in your head, if you've got a problem with your heart, I don't care what the problem is, and you need Jesus to show up and heal you right now. I want you to be bold about it. I want you to raise your hand. I'm going to pray for you right here from where I'm at. If this is you right now and you need God to show up and heal you and you want to receive this right now, just raise your hand. Anybody need I see some hands. Come on. Come on, somebody. Come on. I'm seeing some hands. I'm going to pray for you right now and I believe in the name of Jesus that he's going to heal you and he's going to set you free. I'm believing that right now. Let's pray. In the name of Jesus, I thank you, Father, and I command in your mighty name healing. Lord, you know what they need. All of the people that raised their hand and the people that didn't. Lord, the people that need a touch from you, a moment from you, I declare in the name of Jesus, healing, that by your stripes we are healed. So shall it be. And we receive it in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. Amen. Jesus is a healer. And I'll, I'll just land with, can I just tell you one last story? I love, I love hearing about Jesus healing. I'll never forget when I was 23 years old, I was sitting inside a church service, much like you guys are now, and, 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 and the minister said, it's coming up in my heart, I, I, feel like, I feel like God wants to heal somebody with back pain. Right now, somebody wants to heal, God wants to heal somebody right now with back pain, and I'm like, God, this, this, that's me, that's me, and so I, I raised my hand, he said, come, come up here, son, I came up to the front, and, and he said, do you believe God wants to heal you? I said, yeah, absolutely, and he said, the Lord's putting on my heart that actually, that, that, that I'll, I need to pray for your legs. I'm looking at him like cross-eyed. I'm like, you just said my, my, but my back is the problem. And he said, no, go ahead, sit down. He pulls up a chair and he, he takes both of my legs and he holds them out in front of me. And he says, look at this. This is crazy. He said, your left leg is an inch shorter than your right leg. I believe that you have back problems because your leg, your leg is shorter than your right leg. And he began to pray for me. And he said, in the name of Jesus, I command healing. And he, I literally, b before, before me, I watched with my own two eyes Jesus Christ show up and my leg began to grow. I don't have back pain. I don't have back pain. I saw that. Come on, Jesus Christ is a healer. I watched that. So he's got the power to heal. And, and he said, I came to heal the brokenhearted. He's not limited to legs, kneecaps, hips. He's not limited Y'all need the dream. Y'all need to give, give yourself a God-sized dream. Come on, somebody. And let God show up and, and, and be your healer. Jesus is my healer. Go ahead and say it. Number two, write down number two. Jesus is my peace. That's okay. You can say it. Receive it in the name of Jesus, those of you that said it. Jesus is my peace. And I, I just love this. Anytime I hear, I, I hear stories about people coming to Jesus for the very first time, so, some of the things that I, overwhelming stories that I hear is always that, man, I, you know, I've never felt such peace in my life. I've never encountered such overwhelming peace because there's something about Jesus. The Bible says that he is the prince of peace. So not only do you and I have peace with God because of Jesus, but we also have peace on our pillow. Peace in our soul. Come on, peace in our mind. You, you just got to walk in it. You just got to walk in it. You just got to gotta own it. You got to be like that woman that, that said, I, I'm not, I heard what you can do, Jesus. I'm going to go get it. 
I, oh, I wonder if I touch him, if he, he's going to heal me. So I'm going to get up there. I'm going to go get healed. We got to walk in it. We got to walk in it. Remember, the devil comes to bring you torment, brings you anxiety, brings you stress, brings you discord. But Jesus came to bring you peace. He came to bring you life and life abundantly. He, he always shows up with the amount of peace that you need and more. That's why the Bible says peace that surpasses all understanding. You could go through hell on earth and still have peace in your heart. Why is that? Because it's, it's not peace that comes from vacation. It's not peace that comes from your bank account. It's not peace that comes from the security of hiding in your home and being worried about coronavirus. It's the peace that comes from Jesus. The Psalms, Psalms 91 says that no weapon formed in hell shall prosper against me. That's not the right quote. But, but nothing can come near you. You're healed and whole. Jesus is my peace. You know, it comes from God being in control. That's what it, it boils down to. Who's in control of your life? Because when you, when you give Jesus Christ control of your life, he'll come and put peace on your pillow, peace in your mind, peace in your soul. Jesus is my peace. So he's my healer, and he's my peace. You can write down the next one. I love this one. Jesus is my freedom. Oh, come on, somebody. Jesus, I just love this. Jesus is my freedom. You want to know why Jesus set you free? You want to know why Jesus set you free? It's to be free. There's no other reason. Jesus set you free so that you could be free. The Bible says that it is for freedom that Jesus Christ sets you free. It's so you can be free. That's it. In fact, in, in, in John chapter 8, the Bible de declares in verse 32 that freedom comes from Jesus. In fact, it says it this way. Then you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. So it's actually truth that sets you and I free. By the way, Jesus doesn't just say truth, he is truth. Jesus is truth. So in other words, if you say that scripture this way, so that you shall know Jesus, and Jesus will set you free. I just love this. When you come into God's kingdom, when you come into relationship with Jesus, one of the very first things that happens is you get set free. You get set free. Free from bitterness, free from addiction, free from pain. Free from bondage, free from the past. God sets you free. And you might be sitting here going like this. Wait a second, Pastor Ben. This is pretty cool. This is good, but I, I got saved a week ago or a month ago. Or I've been saved for three or four years now. And well, I still got some stuff going on in my life. I still got a mess. I still got some baggage. I got, I got issues and pain. Look, that's all right. Don't you worry about it. Because the Bible says that God's word will never return void. In fact, the Bible says... That God's word will always accomplish the task in which it was sent out to accomplish. So when truth gets in your heart and truth gets in your mind, you might not see the results the first day. But God's word is going to make a difference in your life. Because truth will eventually do the work that it was meant to do. It's going to set you free. God's just so good. He just sets you free to let you be free. See, the enemy is the opposite. The devil wants you to get you bound by something. Wants to get you bound to addiction, bound to isolation and loneliness and, and all kinds of bitterness. But it is freedom that has set us free. Where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. You all started off by saying Jesus. Say it again. Jesus. Come on, say it like you mean it. Jesus. So my Bible says that the spirit of God is here. And where the spirit of God is, that there is freedom. We just need to receive it today. God will do anything to set you free. God will do anything to set you free. So God is so committed. You could be in the worst, most devastating place, most jacked up situation. God never waits for you to come to him. He leaves the 99 to go after you. I remember, I, I remember Alyssa and I... Just a few years ago, we moved from Ambridge, and, and as we were moving out of our apartment, Mila, our, our oldest daughter, she was about six months, maybe five months at the time, and so we were renovating the apartment that we lived in, and I mean, like, we stripped this thing. Um, I, I, I owned the apartment, so I was able to just do all the things that I wanted to do, and, and so we tore up the carpet, we stripped stuff off of the walls, and, 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 and if you've ever been through a remodel or a flip, you know that there's, like, tack stripping that goes all the way around the room. 
pack stripping, now what its job is, it's to hold the carpet in place to keep it from sliding. In other words, it's a whole bunch of nails sticking straight up, very sharp. And so I'm a little bit busy. Mila at the time is slow. Okay, so she's like inchworming, if you'd even call it that. So she's just barely moving across the floor. I'm like, I got time to do my thing. Like, what's up? Holla at your boy. I'm just going to go do my thing. And, and so I, I literally look over. Lo and behold, with my own two eyes, I see Mila. She's made it all the way to the tack stripping. And she just goes like this. And she goes to slam her hand down. I mean, I got up. I beelined for Mila. I picked her up right before she slammed her hand on the tack strip. So that she could be free. That's it. So that she could be free. Can I just encourage you? You could be in the worst place. You could be stuck. You could be pulling yourself into something. God loves you too much. God's going to fight for you. Somebody praise him right now like you mean it. Come on. God delivered you. God set you free. You and I, we had a one-way ticket destination to hell. And Jesus showed up and canceled that thing, ripped it right in half. That's how good he is. That's how good he is. You can write down number four. I I, I just love this because Jesus is my salvation. Jesus is my salvation. He's my salvation. I can't earn my way to God. I, I can't earn my way to heaven. I can't buy everlasting life. It's only by faith in Jesus. God's like, listen, I gave you my son. Jesus, that whomever shall believe in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Translation, I don't care what language you speak. I don't care your nationality. I I don't care. It doesn't matter your background. If you believe in Jesus Christ, you're in. You're saved. If you believe in Jesus, you're good. John chapter 14, Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the way, the truth, and the life. It's not, nobody can get to the Father except through me. It's only Jesus. He's like, listen, I'm salvation. I'm the solution. I'm the answer. I'm the big idea. I'm the, you want to go to heaven? It's me, through me, through Jesus. The Bible says that anybody that believes in Jesus in Romans 10, that if you confess with your mouth and you believe in your heart that Jesus was raised from the dead and he's your Lord, you will be saved. I just love that Jesus is my salvation because it helps me realize I can't save myself. I can't save myself. Some of you, that should set you free. You can't save yourself. It's Jesus. It's Jesus that will save you. I need a Savior. Savior for my sins. Amen? I'm going to close on this. Our last and final thought. Is anybody being encouraged today? This is who Jesus is. You could write down number five. Jesus is my redeemer. Jesus is my redeemer. I just, I love this so much because, and the worship team, they can come out and join me. I love this so much because he actually comes to redeem broken lives. Broken hearts. Broken friendships. Broken relationships. Jesus redeems us from destruction. You know, I was thinking about the thought of redemption. You know, a few years ago, I, I don't know if you guys remember this, in Florida there was, a, there was this big bridge next to a college. It was, it was like all over the news. And let me grab some stuff for you. There was this big bridge. And um, this bridge right next to the college, as, as tons of people are walking across it, it's real busy, it's hustling and bustling, it was, it was crossing a major highway and this, this bridge actually collapsed. I don't know if you guys remember that, about three years ago, it was all over the news. 
It was so sad. There was such rubble, such mess, such destruction. And they had to come in and they, they had to rebuild it. They had to rebuild it. You might feel like your life right now is just a mess. You might feel like you've got such disarray going on. It's caved in. It's destroyed. You know Job in the Bible. Job is like the perfect example of like hashtag worst day ever. Worst day. He gets before God. He's like, God, how could, how could this happen to me? Like, God, how could, how could this happen to me? My wife doesn't love you anymore. My kids are dead. I've lost all of my property, God. Like, how? This is my life, Lord. My life is a wreck. It's a mess. And in Job 19, 25, Job says, but I know my Redeemer lives. I know my Redeemer lives. I know the one person that can redeem the destruction, the one person that can show up and fix the mess. I know my Redeemer lives. He's my healer. He's my savior. He's my peace. He's my freedom. Jesus Christ can redeem you today. He can bring you back. He can rebuild you. I want to go back to that verse for a second. Y'all good with me? Can we just take a moment? We just sit in God's presence for a second. It's not normal. I don't have a podium. So. Anybody want to be blessed by Jesus today? I want, to, I want to point out some things to you real quick before we continue. In Mark 5, this woman, this is so crazy. I want to give you four quick thoughts. Real quick, four quick thoughts. If you'll lean in, if you'll write this down, I believe it'll, it, God will do something. I believe God's doing something right now. Stick with me. This woman had such great suffering for 12 years and nobody could fix her. No one, nothing. Spent all this money. Nothing could do it. Instead, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, somebody say she heard. The first thing I want you to write down is that she heard. You heard a lot about Jesus today. Somebody say, I heard. So, you, so, so she heard. And then what did she do? She said, if I just touched his clothes, I'll be healed. There wasn't a question. If I just got in proximity of Jesus, if I just... If I reached, if I could just, when I touch him, she thought to herself, I'm going to receive my healing. I heard how amazing he is. I heard that he can, he can take a broken glass that is a million pieces and he can put it back together. Maybe that glass looks like my life. But he could do it. So the second thing is, is that she, she thought to herself, I'll be healed. I'll be healed. This is so amazing because what did she do? She moved to him. She started moving. She started moving his direction. For some of us today, in fact, that's the third thing is we just got to move his direction. We just got to set our eyes on him. He's the target. Not the problem in your life. Not the issue. We could talk about the woman that had a problem of blood. That's not the issue. Our eyes need to be laser focused on Jesus because he's the solution. <laughs> I feel like the Lord's saying right now that if you'll just look at me, if you'll look at me, if you'll turn yourself in my direction, I'll do things in your life that you can't even imagine. 
I'll make a way where there doesn't look like there's a way. I'll bring hope in the midst of despair. And then the fourth thing. So are you guys good? I'm not good. You good? You good, bro? I'm not good, bro. She set an appointment. She set an appointment. He didn't even know. He didn't even know. Wait a minute. She surprised Jesus. She surprised Jesus. I want to encourage you tonight that it's not done. Set an appointment. You heard about him. You heard how good he is. You know what you need from God. Is it healing? Is it revelation? Is it an answer? You know what you need. Set an appointment. And then reach out and touch him. 